My fellow queers and allies, it is I, your Duchess. Earlier this year, I addressed you all on the state of the duchy and the prismatic queerdom. In such a short time, we've seen an escalation in the social climate regarding trans and non-binary individuals, from the New York Times to rhetoric propagated and amplified by authors and celebrities to affirming legislation passed by a nation's citizens but blocked by their rulers. There are terrifying anti-trans and anti-LGBTQ legislation and sentiment sweeping our country, not only in state houses across the nation, but also in medical boards, education boards, and other keystone groups in our society. Now it is more important than ever to be involved in our local communities. Just remember the statistic. One affirming adult in an LGBTQ youth's life can reduce the risk of suicide by 40%. That small act can have a profound effect. Here in the United States, the Human Rights Campaign is working to defeat 340 anti-LGBTQ plus bills at the state level, 150 of which target transgender, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and gender expansive individuals, the highest number on record. There are 90 bills that would prevent trans youth from being able to access age-appropriate, medically necessary, best practice health care, two of which have already become law in Utah and South Dakota. There are more bathroom ban bills on the docket than any previous year. Catherine Oakley from the HRC tells us that 2022 is shaping up to be historically bad. So far, we're at 340 bad bills introduced across the country, including the most anti-transgender bills ever filed. This is about young folks being prohibited from being able to live healthy, full lives. Students learn best when they are able to focus on the lessons instead of worrying about being treated differently because of who they are or where they're from. But right now, politicians are targeting vulnerable children in a way that makes schools feel unsafe for all kids and deprives them of their right to a full education. According to GLSEN research, compared to other students in the LGBTQ community, transgender and gender nonconforming students face more hostile school climates. These are the facts that we do know. These bills put an already vulnerable group in more danger, one. Two, these bills hurt students' academic achievement and the educators held accountable for student success. Three, these bills would be nearly impossible to implement and enforce as they are rented. Enforcing these bills would be prohibitively expensive and time-consuming for schools and extraordinarily invasive towards transgender students. Now for the final point, and most alarming, is a public health crisis to which these bills could lead. Discriminatory policies affect more than just grades. LGBTQ students who experience discrimination, like being prohibited from using the restroom, report higher levels of depression and lower self-esteem. Research shows that, as a result of a hostile school climate, transgender students are more likely to abuse drugs than the general population. This places an oversized burden on school health and public health officials. Here are some statistics from the Trevor Project. 45% of queer youth seriously considered attempting suicide in the past year. 45%. Nearly one in five transgender and non-binary youth attempted suicide, and LGBTQ youth of color reported higher rates than their white peers. Fewer than one in three transgender and non-binary youth found their home to be gender affirming. LGBTQ youth who found their schools to be LGBTQ affirming reported lower rates of attempted suicide. 60% of LGBTQ youth who wanted mental health care in the past year were not able to get it. And finally, LGBTQ youth who live in a community that is accepting of queer people reported significantly lower rates of attempting suicide than those who do not. You can find more information and statistics like I have on the websites of organizations like the Human Rights Campaign, GLSEN, and the Trevor Project. Now, here in Georgia, we are facing perilous times indeed. The wonderful people at Georgia Equality has informed us here about the legislation here in our own state, Senate Bill 88. Senate Bill 88, an expansive censorship bill targeting queer youth and educators, will be getting another hearing soon in the state Senate. SB 88 
which censor conversations about queer people in schools and is a threat to the freedom of expression in Georgia, according to legal and policy experts. The intentionally vague and confusing language in this bill would have a chilling effect on free speech, distract school administrators from real issues, and interfere with teachers' abilities to do their jobs. Denying students an inclusive curriculum or access to books can lead to a negative impact on their mental health, academic performance, and sense of well-being, and connectedness at school, especially among LGBTQ students. Across the country, there are countless local organizations in which you can involve yourself and become a powerful ally in helping LGBTQ plus youth, whether that's speaking out, providing safe spaces for children to be themselves, or writing legislatures and speaking up at medical boards, school boards, and more. It is part of our civic duty to do as much as we are able, in our own capacities, to help protect and nurture our future. Every person from Nat 5 to 95 deserves a life of dignity and respect. And our youth deserve an environment where they feel safe to learn. If you are a member of the Prismatic Queerdom, queer or ally, I implore you to first look after your own mental health. Practice daily self-care rituals. Take time to make space for you. If you are able to contribute, whether actively or passively, to ensuring discrimination will not be tolerated, I implore you to do so. And finally, if you are able to, stay. It can seem romantic to leave, and if one must do so for the sake and or being of one's family, I certainly understand. But this is our home as well. And there are many who are not able to or do not have the resources to go. Take care. And as always to those who seek to discriminate and harm, let my people live.